and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. The asset store is full of awesome tools and assets to help you make your own games. There's more and more awesome stuff coming out every month, so in this video, let's check out some highlights for December 24. This one is a list of paid systems and tools. In the last video, I already covered all the best free new assets, and next one, I'll be covering top visuals and effects. As always, there's links to the asset in the description, and as a bonus, you can use the coupon code MONKEY10 to get 10% off your order. Also, the Unity New Year sale is currently ongoing. If you need anything from assets, tools, visuals, sound effects, music, and pretty much anything, if so, then go ahead and pick it up. For some quick highlights, I always highly recommend Feel, great asset for polishing your games. Text Animator is also excellent if your game has any kind of text. Easy Save is great if you just want a save system that works. If you have tons of assets all over the place and the asset inventory is a must-have. Conrise Pro is great for taking your assets and making them look completely different. Or if you have some Unreal assets, this tool can help you convert to and from Unity. Check out everything on sale with the link in the description. Also, stay up to date with my Game Dev Report newsletter. This is where I cover the latest game dev news and interesting articles that I come across every week. Things like this awesome free multiplayer Unity ebook, or how much is a Steam Daily Deal worth, learn the two paths you can take to do game dev, or how this Parker game made 750k in just one week. Check it out to the link in the description. Alright, so starting off with a tool to help you add awesome real-time global illumination. If you want high quality lighting, then this is what you need. And high quality lighting is really the thing that can take your game from boring to awesome. The difference that it makes having some high quality lighting is truly massive. On this one, the light bounces in a really satisfying manner. For example, if you have a green wall with some intense light, then everything around becomes slightly green. Definitely super high quality, really great results. The whole thing is based on voxels, which I'm assuming you can customize the size in order to make it more or less performant. I do wonder how does this one compare to Unity's own Adaptive Pro volumes. I haven't used those yet, so I'm not sure. All I know is if you want to make your game look good, you should definitely look into some global illumination, either this one or the built-in one. Next, here's a pretty interesting tool for helping you build custom inspectors with a no-code workflow. One obvious tool that everyone already knows is Odin. That's a great tool for making custom tools, making custom inspectors. So this one seems similar, but the whole thing works without any code. So there's no need to write any attributes or any scripts. You just use the include editor builder and set things up. It looks really nice and easy to use. It is very capable with all kinds of sliders, buttons, and a bunch more. This looks especially awesome for designers and non-coders. The ability to be able to make your own tools without having to write code, that sounds like a really awesome feature. And especially on a team with no programmers, I can imagine this will be an excellent productivity boost. Then here's another interesting one. This one is for keeping track of what happens with your game. It's a sort of timeline for your game, for your objects. Basically, you define the data you want to track, like the health amount or some kind of speed value, and then you can track as that variable changes over time. So you can see, for example, the enemy had 100 health, then they took damage from one bullet, and suddenly they have 50 health. This one supports any type, so you can store floats, you can record ints, also enums, lists, dictionaries, and a bunch more. You can even apply some custom formatting with different colors to make some values really stand out, or you can just draw some bars instead of using some numbers. Normally, when I debug, I use tons of logs to see exactly what happened before a certain bug occurred, so I can see this tool being quite useful for those scenarios. Next, here's a super simple tool. It's a shader profiler. Like the name implies, this one helps you profile all your shaders in your game. You click a button and it automatically analyzes the shader, and then it draws some bunning boxes around them. So you can easily visually see all of the objects with all the shaders and how exactly complex they are. You can also see the drop-down menu with some text for why that shader is complex. You can customize the colors to make them red, yellow, green, and a bunch more. So if your game has GPU issues, then I can see this being quite a useful little tool. Super easy to quickly see where your hotspots might be. Then here is another a simple tool. This one lets you play YouTube videos directly inside your game. You just drag the prefab, input the URL, and that's it. If your game has some mods or community content, then I can see this one being great. You can let your players upload tutorials or some gameplay for how to do something in your game with some kind of mods, and then just show that video directly in-game. You can play any video, any YouTube URL, you can turn them into lights, so this one makes the whole Unity scene look quite nice, and it also supports 360 and 3D video. If you want something a bit more simple and local, then you can just look at the built-in video player component. I have a lecture on it in my Ultimate Unity Overview course. Next, here's a more visual tool. It's a rope connection system and framework. I must say this is one tool that I've long wanted to build myself, some kind of rope system. It sounds like a fun thing to build. You really just need some points and then dynamically generate a mesh. But if you don't want to build yourself, then you can just use this tool. It includes editor tools to create the points. You can pull and drag them. They have all the gizmos. 
Then you can add end caps or loops, you can customize the material, and even make them hang like power lines or some really heavy ropes. Then for another awesome visual tool, here is Bake AO. Like the implies, this one lets you bake ambient occlusion. If you don't know, this is one of my favorite effects. I always add it. It adds some nice shadows to your geometry, so it makes the whole scene feel much more grounded. But the normal way of adding AO is by doing it with a post-processing effect, meaning it has some actual real-time costs. So if you need something insanely fast, then this tool helps you bake that visual, the ambient occlusion, helps you bake that directly into your object. Just add the component, click on bake, and it already looks awesome. So this is a really great way to have your game look good and perform. Next, here's a fun one. It's a tool for helping you project the camera view directly onto a character. It is definitely a bit of a strange one, but I can see it has quite a lot of use cases. The main one would be camouflage, so you can make the character blend with the background. If you make it perfect, then it's completely invisible. But of course, you can add some slight noise to make it slightly warp the world behind it. That makes it look like some sci-fi camouflage thing, kind of like Crisis. Or perhaps you can just print the current camera view directly onto the character, kind of like take a snapshot and then just keep it. So definitely this is a very strange thing, but I can see a lot of interesting use cases. Then if you work as part of a large team and need to organize people, here is a nice tool. It is called hats, so you can basically wear different hats. You can create different workspaces for each team. So the art team has one, the programmers have another one, and so on. You can define some rules and lock some folders or objects. That way, other teams cannot work on that. And then with some simple attributes, you can mark some fields as hidden, so you can hide them for just some teams. For example, hide the material fields from the programmers and hide the debug fields from the artists. For me, I work solo, so this tool isn't really for me, but it does look quite useful. Next, here's a tool that is actually a collection of tools. Basically, it's a ton of tiny things all in one place. You can move objects with the keys. You can snap in all sorts of ways. You can have the grid movable with some objects. You can rotate objects independently, even if they are a child. You can bookmark views and easily move between them. You can customize the overlay. See all the shortcuts and all the menus. So this is one of those tools that if you take the time to learn, you can probably get quite a lot out of it. All right, so those are my top 10 new tools and systems on the Unity Asset Store for December 24. There's links to all in the description. And as bonus, you can use the coupon code MONKEY10 to get 10% off your order. All right, hope that's useful. Check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.